Mike Long. The VC attack in which you were injured occurred on... 16 October 1969, near play crew. Uh, Nikki, you see the social security card in here? Mm, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, you were separated from the service on... 52171, Lindemann General Hospital, San Francisco, California. Oh, your place of birth? <laughs> Come on, Nikki, that's enough. Harper Electronics has any more questions on their employment application. They must be looking for a chairman of the board. Mike, there's got to be another way to check those robberies besides you going in undercover. Afraid not. Anyway, I like it this way. Wouldn't it be easy to let Duke arrange it for you to be hired? What's the matter, Nikki? You afraid I can't get a job of my own at Harper? Of course not, but... Let's go. Hey, hey. That's a fella. Now, 835 Charlie's been a familiar, comfortable, protected world for me. Full of tenderness and loving care. I have never been accused of such a thing in my entire life. <laughs> oh, that Harper Electronics. That's something else again. Bigger world. Not so protected. I'd say so. A series of accidents, two robberies in a month, and a hostage killed. Hey, you, listen to me. Hey, now don't you complain about the food when I'm gone, will you? Huh? <laughs> and you two, will you try and stay out of trouble? <laughs> It's very important to you, isn't it? Well, let's just say I want to see if I can make it on my own. Really on my own. Well, of course you can. I don't know that. Not yet. How uh, will we stay in touch? Marvelous instrument called the telephone. Don't call me. I'll call you. All right. Take care. Yeah. You too. <laughs> Stairs in the right 15 feet. Thanks. May I? Yes, thank you. It's an uphill fight with that ramp. It's sort of like a mini freeway for the wheelchair people. I'm uh, looking for Emma Brinkley. Just go on in. She'll find you. Okay, thank you, Miss... Um... Paula Brinkley. Emma's my mother. Thanks again. I want you to meet our new boarder, everyone. This is Mike Long. Hello. Gary Cook here. Welcome to the club, Mike. Play the game sometime? Cool. You have 20-20 hearing. It's Mitchell, Sue, and Charlie. I'm Mitchell. You gonna be looking for a job? Yes. At Harper? Yeah, I uh, heard they had a program there that I might fit into. Well, what you probably haven't heard is that Harper's been robbed twice. Very special, highly classified electronics parts. Go on. Well, that can happen to any big company. But each time they got hit, there was some freak accident at one of our workstations. It makes us look funny, like we were to blame. That could mean our jobs. It could make it tougher for you to get a job at this place. Enough of that talk now. Charlie, why don't you finish playing that piece? Well, I show Mike up to his room. This way. It wasn't much of a welcome, you know. <laughs> Stairs here. <laughs> Paul turns left here. Jerry was right about you. You do have 20-20 hearing. <laughs> what about her? 
She has only one arm, but I want to see the pool shark. Now, two steps forward, and to your left is a pay phone. And to your right here is your bedroom door. Hmm? The bed, your left, to your right, the closet. Now, if there's anything you need, why, you let me know. Uh, the coffee's on every morning at 7. Oh, that's disconnected. They'll be by any day now and take it out. Well, that's about everything. Huh? It seemed to be pretty full up here. I guess I was lucky to get a room when I called. <laughs> you know, somebody's going to tell you, so it may as well be me. Tell me what, Mr. Brinkman? The man who was shot and killed last week in the robbery at Harbor, uh, Ray Claridge, this was his room. Well, then his phone. Yes, yes, it was. He had it installed after he was made chief of parts control. I don't know, maybe, maybe he thought he'd get a lot of important calls after the promotion. But I don't remember ever hearing it ring. Lonely man. Only person who ever seemed to get a smile out of him was my daughter Paula. Could I, uh, could I help point you? Oh, yes, thank you. I'm, uh, I'm looking for personnel at the employment office. Ah, I'm going just that way. Maybe I can show you. Thank you. I'm, uh, Walter Glenn, personnel director. Oh, hi, Walter. Uh, Mike, Mike Long. <laughs> right. How about if, uh, if you push a nice deer, huh? Okay. There we go. Oh, your mother runs a boarding house for some of the employees and partners that you help train them. My father's a security guard here. He's been a brief on the payroll ever since Harper opened its doors. Kind of an institution, huh? I mean, just to try some word. No, that's, that's very expensive for a few. It's uh, my weaknesses. I'd find out about them sometime. Remember, you're on trial. I'm supposed to check out your weaknesses. Yeah. All right, whatever you say. All right. So then? Paula. This the new man? Ben Carson. He's one of the supervisors here. Uh, how are you, Mr. Carson? Ben will do. Personnel gave me a rundown. Just out of the surface. Huh? That's right. Spot's down. Really? Hello? All right, Paula, he's all yours. a good start for someone like you. I mean, your service background, you haven't been demolitions. You must have had sensitive touch even when... Even when I wasn't blind? Yes. You weren't blind. Now, it's a very important, delicate operation. You'll be building harnesses. Move your fingers over it and trace it. Imagine, imagine what it looks like. Over on your left is a box with many wires. Start the first one and pull it out. Go back to the board. Now, you take the end of the wire, place it in this wire holder here. And you trace the wire along this raised line around the nail up along this raised line into its proper slot. And then you put the wire down between the rows of nails. Lay it down here. There. To the end, where there will be a connector later. We solder, but for now we'll just put a tape on it. Let's just say I want to see if I can make it. Well, of course you can. I don't know that. Not yet. It isn't easy, Mike. We'll make mistakes, costly mistakes. It's, it's expected up to a point. But 
you might as well know right from the start you're nobody special here no different than anyone else if you don't cut it you're out i'll cut it i hope you do been two days. Well, time goes fast when you're having fun. Nikki, I uh, got the job. They're training me. Congratulations. Thanks. Oh, there's no word yet on the truck that was used in the second robbery or the three men. Well, you keep in touch with Duke and the police. Okay. How are you? Oh, fine. They, uh, they gave me the room belonging to the late Ray Claridge. The hostage that was killed? That's a cheerful note. Yeah. Claridge had a private phone installed and there's a payphone right across the hall from him. Nicky, see if you can find out what his disconnected number was, check phone company records. I want to know why he craves such privacy. Okay. Maybe he had a lady friend. Well, could be. Mike, uh, why did they kill him? Maybe he recognized one of them. Or maybe he wasn't a hostage at all. Good night, Nicky. Good night, Mike. This is my bowling night. And I knew you'd forget this. Thanks, honey. See you later. Good luck on the job, son. Thanks. Paula broke in. You had a good teacher. Good to see you, Paula. Can I give you a lift? Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Dad's a nice guy. He tries hard. So does my mother. They're the ones who encouraged me to take this job. Mike, I spoke to Walt. He says you're doing very well. Walt? Walter Glenn, you know, the personnel director. He's going to give you your job. Oh. I admire you doing what you do for a living. It's a job. Is that all it is? Just a job? No, of course not. The question is, is it a living? At the ranch. Oh, thanks for the lift. Coming in? I uh, have some shopping to do. I'll see you later tonight. Okay, thanks.
Hey, Mike. Yeah? Now that you've pinned down the job and you're going to stay around a while, if you don't have any chance to play an instrument, I've been trying to put together this combo. No, uh, sorry, uh, afraid not. I'm glad you got the job, Mike. Thanks. Why, thank me. When one of us succeeds, we all succeed. Sure seems like a loner. Easy, Mike. Come in. Just wanted to see if everything was all right with you. Oh, yes, fine, thank you. Room's comfortable? Yes. This used to be my son's room, you know, before we took in boarders, before he died. It's really full of memories. Say, there's a real nice hi-fi downstairs. Maybe you'd like to listen to some albums. No, no, thank you. Play cards? There's a braille deck. Uh, actually, Mrs. Brinkley, I'm just a little tired. I see. You mind if I say something? No, of course not. These are good people here, special people. It's a challenge for some of them just to get up in the morning and get through another day. Mrs. Brinkley, I... Now, I've started this. You may as well let me say it. All right. They are trying to accept you as you are. You ought to try to accept them as they are. That's nothing to do with them, Mrs. Brinkley. It's just that, uh... <laughs> sometimes I have a little trouble accepting myself. Once in a while, we all do, Mike. Might as well know right now, you're nobody special here. You're no different than anyone else. If you don't cut it, you're out. I'll cut it. When one of us succeeds, we all succeed. Mike, there's got to be another way to check those robberies besides you're going in undercover. <laughs> How does it feel to be working for a living? You get a line on Clarence's phone calls? Uh, they only keep records of toll calls. And? Well, the only thing that seems significant is that he called one number pretty often. Where? It's a New Orleans prefix. Let's we'll see if you can get an address, huh? Okay. Hey, it goes all right? Yeah, yeah, it goes all right. Bye. Bye. Hey, Walt, you got a minute? Sure, Ben. Come in. Thanks. What's up? Well, you know the new man, Mike Long? Yes. Isn't he working out? No, he's doing okay. It's just that, uh... It's just there's something funny about him. I don't know, the way he acts, the way he gets around with that cane. The way Paula looks at him? It's got nothing to do with that. All right, what then? Well, he's been nosing around the plant. Check stations, parts control, the loading dock. Frank Brinkley caught him wandering through a restricted area. What do you want me to do? I want you to check his application and his records. See if he's who he says he is. Come in. 
Hi, Mike. Hi, hold it, man. Sit down. Thank you. I've had some uh, very good reports on your progress. Oh, thanks. I'm glad to hear it. You've made a remarkable adjustment. Oh, I've had a lot of incentive, a lot of help. Maybe. But people like us have to make things happen on our own. We want to get you as fully oriented as we can to suitable jobs here in the plant. That way you can be an even more valuable member of the team. So starting today, you'll be assigned new work. Oh, uh, Mr. Glenn, I, uh, I hardly have the hang of the work I've been doing. I'm sure you can handle it, and Paula will be helping you. Okay. But so long as it's not in the uh, parts department. I heard that uh, one of the guys who worked down there, he uh, got killed in one of those robberies. Okay, Mr. Glenn, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, good luck. Thank you. These circuit boards are part of the main brain controlling the special computer system we make for the Air Force. Sort of like holding a jive on your hand. Run your fingers over them and feel for the slightest rough spot that could indicate a break in the circuit. That feels like a rough spot right there. Right. Now, defect parts are put in this tray on the right. Uh, how about the ones that are okay? <laughs> put those in this tray on the left. Yeah. They'll be picked up at your working station at regular intervals. Now, let's try this next one. Excuse me, you said uh, a look, not a tour. Huh? Oh, well, it's just that it's hard for me to visualize the empty apartment downstairs all done up. Well, whoever lives here certainly has expensive taste. I can never afford this on my salary. Well, now, that place downstairs, that's uh, not cheap to begin with. And if you're worried about affording, uh, I think we're just wasting our time. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yes. Uh, now, what is it exactly that you do? Uh, oh, I'm a collector. No kidding. Of, of, uh, of what? What do you... Illusions? Impressions? The uh, woman who lives here... Uh, how did you know? You think she would make a good neighbor? Well, I don't get to see much of her. She... There's uh, times when weeks go by and uh, she doesn't come around at all. And mm. Of course, there's one thing the owners insist on. And that's uh, no parade of men in and out. It's, it's a respectable building. Of course, when uh, Miss, uh, Miss uh, Lewis is around, uh, she always has uh, lots of company, so... <laughs> Well, uh, let me think it over, and uh, I'll call you. Yes, well, I probably have a car downstairs. Oh, wow. I'll, I'll see if I can find it.
like there was some freak accident at one of our workstations. It makes us look funny, like we were to blame. feeling sorry for yourself? No, I'm just angry. Well, the important thing isn't your anger. It's that the program for hiring a handicap may be abandoned. Yeah, I know. I feel sorry for them. Hi, Mike. Join us. No, thanks. Some other time. Hello? There's another robbery today. Anyone hurt? I'm just some feelings. Oh, Mike, I found that address and I went there. Well, I don't recall our discussing that. It's an apartment, a woman's apartment. Very posh in its way. What woman? Kind of a mystery woman named Lewis. Uh, vague description. She pays rent with cashier's checks, comes and goes at irregular intervals, and has several gentlemen callers. Are you there, Mike? I'm here. No, no, I think first the electronics company will cancel the Hire the Handicap program. Well, why? The accidents are obviously set up. You know, they're a big company. They can't afford mistakes even while they're checking them out. And they're good workers, Nikki. They've got more at stake, more to prove. Yeah. Well, I'll, uh, I'll keep in touch. Okay, bye-bye. Anybody here? That could mean our jobs. It could make it possible for you to get a job in this place. isn't it? How do you mean? Well, I mean, it's better for you without them. Charlie and Jerry and Sue and Mitchell, you know, the group. No, 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 that's, uh, <laughs> that's not true. I'm no different from them. It's just that, you know, I, I don't think of myself as being handicapped. You sound like my brother. He was in an automobile accident when he was 17, and, uh, Spent the rest of his life up in that room that you're in now. Paralyzed, neck down. And he never thought of himself as handicapped either. Always cheerful and smiling. He loved to dance, my brother. You'd like to dance? Yeah, I used to. I mean, sure. Sure, most people dance with their eyes shut anyway. A lot of people with their eyes open don't see very well sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed that too. Would you like to go dancing some night away from here? Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds that sounds good. I 
know, a marvelous little place in, in New Orleans, tucked away in the French Quarter. Uh, do you, uh, you get down there very often? I mean, uh, down New Orleans. Well, once in a while, it's got everything I want. Fun, excitement, laughter. Yeah, I guess it can't be much fun for you around here, living with them in the house here. We're observant. I'm sure my mother and father don't see it that way, though. I think they feel that we're, I don't know, making something up to my poor dead brother, making some enormous contribution to humanity. And what do you feel? You're right. It isn't much fun for me. I want... What? What do you want, Paula? More. More than I've ever had here. Well, if that's what you want, I hope you get it. Very nice guy, Mike. Now, oh, thanks, but uh, <laughs> you know what they say about nice guys. Good night, Paula. I'll talk with you. You are talking with me. Ben asked me to check on Mike Long's background. Why? What for? Well, you just didn't buy him, that's all. Paula, there's no such person as Mike Long. Not if you go back far enough. If he's a plant, a ringer, we could be in real trouble. ID. He's a plant. I can smell it. Look, he knows I've got access to every place around here. If he snoops, he'll find out that I had the day off when Claridge was killed. Also, he knows that Walter promoted Claridge to the parts department. The only person he may not connect is you. Is he smarter than we think he is? Well, okay, the whole thing was your idea. You brought it to us. You decide. What do we do? Let me think about it. Good shot, Mike. <laughs> I can do it with my shit. 
say, today's paper's got a story about the robbery. Oh, what's it say? It's not the last robbery, it's the one before. They found the truck in Lake Pontchartrain. Say anything about the man? Mm, unidentified so far. Paula, why are you here so late? Oh, I forgot something, Dad, something I have to take care of. What's that for? I'll be in New Orleans for the weekend. See you Monday. Thanks. Have a good time. What did you think about it? I don't know what Mike knows, but you'll have to take care of him. No, I don't like it. First Claridge, now long. I didn't bargain for any murders. Claridge shouldn't have tried to quit on us, Walt. And Mike shouldn't be trying to catch us. When? Tomorrow night, he'll be at the apartment. What about tonight? I'll meet you there. Kind of a mystery woman named Lewis. Has several gentlemen callers. It's too bad about your program being canceled. Just too many accidents happening around you people. You're nobody special here. Only person who ever seemed to get a smile out of him was my daughter Paula. No, that's that's very expensive for a funeral. It's uh, one of my weaknesses. I see you tonight. I spoke to Walt. He said you're doing very well. Come in. Hi. Oh, hi, Paula. Come on in. Sit down. Shall I leave the door open? <laughs> no, no. I think my reputation can stand. Mine too. Uh, Mike, Mom says that you're still upset about the uh, robbery. Now about being used. How do you mean? I mean, whoever's behind these robberies is uh, is using the handicapped workers. Well, that shouldn't bother you, even if it is true. You're not like them. Why do you say that? There's something about you, something extraordinary. Well, there's something extraordinary about everybody. Hey, that was a compliment. I know, thanks. No, I haven't been in this room for a long time. Since, uh, since your brother died? Since before he died. Mike, uh, what about our date? Our date? to go dancing. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I forgot. Thank you, sir. <laughs> sorry. How about tonight? I'm busy tonight. Uh, tomorrow? No, it's fine. You'll have to pick me up. It's in New Orleans. The address is 1520 Saratoga. New Orleans? I'll be visiting a friend. Oh, all right, fine. I'll see you then. I'm looking forward to it already. Ben Carson spent six months in a veteran's hospital psychiatric ward after his discharge from the Marines. What about Walter Glenn? Well, he's a widower. He worked for several industrial plants in New England, and after his accident, he came to Louisiana, hired by Harper. Okay, Nikki, that's it. Uh, one more thing. The apartment in New Orleans, you remember the address? Yes, sir, 1520 Saratoga. Someone on the inside, Ben. Someone who knew parts inventory. Claridge. The one who gave Claridge his job in the parts department, Walter Glenn. It all fits, Nicky. Except for one thing. <laughs> Fume. Mike, come on in. Why did you come? I, we said tomorrow. Can't make it tomorrow, Paula. Neither can you. 
I don't know what you mean. I mean, it's over. What are you talking about? I'm talking about different kinds of handicaps. I'm talking about a woman, unhappy, disturbed, who persuaded three men to help her get what she wanted, even if it involved murder. You see, Paula, there was no real reason to kill Clary. Jiffy was a hostage, but if you were a member of the gang, if there had been an argument. Mike, listen to me. You were friendly with all three of them, weren't you? Yes. With Ben, Walter, Claridge. Well, the police are looking for them right now, Paula. They're going to pick them up for questioning. What in the world for? Ben killed Claridge, didn't he? And Walter Glenn, he's tied in there somewhere. He had to be. Had to be someone you could use. I wish I could show you what I've done with this place. It isn't much, really, but uh, it's a step in the right direction. What direction? Away from that house, those people. Crutches, wheelchairs, shiny metal braces. I hate them. I'm afraid of them. I'd do anything to get away, even this far. And you did. Anything at all. It all started with you. You've never touched me, Mike. The police will get them, Paula. Anyone else who helped them. You too. The police are downstairs now. They're waiting for you. Could be so good with us. I don't think so. Why not? For one thing, those, uh, those people you hate, that you're afraid of. I'm one of them. He's gone. They're waiting. And you'll want to talk to your, uh, your father and your mother. They were good with my brother. They tried so hard to keep him alive. Anything more, Mike. Frank and I understand. We only understood sooner. Oh, I'm sorry, Emma. Goodbye. Thanks for everything. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Goodbye, Mike. Come back for a game of pool. I will. Good luck. And thanks. Well, I couldn't let a little thing like those robberies put us out of business, could I? Do you know what you said, Mike? Yes, I, uh, I said us. Thank you. 